Hello, here in this section we're going to be looking at 3.3, rate of change in slope. Here's the why. Patterns define our lives. Understanding how patterns change is essential to surviving. An example of that would be seasons. We know that the seasons come around, there are four different ones of the year, and we make plans accordingly. And how we make plans for that impacts our ability to do well and stay healthy, and in the old days, survive as they were planting and growing food in the seasons. Stock prices, you know, you always hear talk about the economy and how the economy is doing, and how is it changing in a positive direction? Is it going down? Traffic patterns. You know, we use that as we're, as we're driving home to decide, you know, which route's going to be best. You know, depending on this time of the day, you know, how, how much longer does it take to get home due to traffic than if we leave at this time. We use patterns and rate of change all of the time to help make decisions. What I'd like for you to do is to go here and think about what are some ways that you use patterns to impact your life or decisions that you make, you know, on a daily basis or maybe weekly basis, whatever, um, based upon past occurrences to where you would expect a similar pattern to happen. So here's what we've got. We're going to talk about slope and we're also going to talk about rate of change and the difference. So here's what rate of change is. It's a ratio. It's going to mean a fraction for us that describes. So it's going to be a fraction that describes on average. How much one quantity so one amount quantity just means amount changes with respect to another quantity. So different spots that you might have heard about, you know, a rate of change is making money. If you work a job and you make $13 per hour, that's a rate of change because it's talking about how much one quantity changes with respect to another. The amount of money you earn changes by $13 per hour, right? And you'll see, you know, if we were to write that out, it'd be $13 per one hour. You see that that's a fraction. If you're taking the ACT math section when there's 60 questions in 60 minutes, you're trying to do one question per minute on average, right? So the rate of change is on average how much one quantity changes with respect to another, which means if you finished the ACT math section in exactly 60 minutes, on average, you took one qu uh, minute per question. Now, that doesn't mean that you didn't spend three minutes on some and maybe 15 seconds on others, but overall, the average, you know, so the ratio that describes on average how much one quantity changes with respect to another. Now, here's how that differs from slope. Slope is going to be describing specifically linear situations, right? So slope is when we are talking about lines, and it's essentially the same concept as rate of change, but we're going to only mention the word slope when we are talking specifically about lines. And so with that, we're going to talk about the change between what's called the rise, and that's our y values, compared to these, you'll see here it as rise over run, which describes our x values. And it will tell you the same information as a ratio with the rate of change, but we use slope when we're talking specifically about lines. So here is the slope formula. 
M is going to stand for slope for us as we start to use it in some different formulas. This formula brings two subtraction signs with it. Those two subtraction signs will always come. And what it's going to do is it's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so what those stand for is it's going to help us talk about two coordinate points. And so what those smaller ones and twos are is describing which x and which y coordinate we're talking about. Because we're going to have two coordinate points, and we'll take one y coordinate and subtract the other, and we'll do one x coordinate and subtract the other, and turn it into the ratio for the fraction. Okay. So here, we're going to look at these, and it says, find the slope of the line that passes through each pair of points. We're going to do this both visually and with the equation. All right, so I'm going to first do this with the equation. I'm going to treat this point as my y2. So for this, I'm going to do 0 minus 3. And what that's going to tell me is how I changed in the y direction, my rise. Then I'm going to do negative 1, subtract negative 2. And what I'll end up getting here is a negative 3 over, got a set of double positives there, 1. So this ends up telling me here that my slope is a negative 3 over 1. And so what that means from a rise over run perspective is we're going to go down 3 to the right 1. And if we take this path, we see that that does in fact match. If I go down 1, 2, 3 to the right 1, I land back on my line. And we could do that as many times as we wanted. Down 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. And we land back on our line. So what that means for us here is that we can find the slope between two points. You can also just count it if you have a graph. But sometimes if you don't have a graph or the numbers are very far away, that rate of change formula, the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 comes in handy. Now, from a counting perspective, let me address something here. Because I have people ask me this, this question. They'll say, does it matter which point we start with? It doesn't, but there's something we need to keep in mind. So to go from one point to the next, I'm going to count it out. We go up one, two, three, four. So when I'm looking at my slope here, I have a rise of four. And I have a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I get that my slope is a positive 4 over 5. If we go the other way, though, here's what's going to happen. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, but we had to go down. So that would be a negative 4. And then we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. However, it was 5 to the left, and going to the left is negative, just like going down is negative for y. So if I start with the other point, I'll get the same answer, but they'll end up looking slightly different at first until you recognize, oh, that's a negative divided by a negative. That then turns back into the same 4 over 5. So what we just saw here was an example of a negative slope, an example of a positive slope. There's two more. All right, and we can see that here's a special case right here. This line doesn't have a positive or negative slope. It's laying perfectly flat. And so what we're going to determine about that is that it's either going to be undefined or zero. Here's a couple of special cases for us. All right. Um, let's do the zero line first, and that's going to be what's happening here on three. So zero slopes are horizontal lines. And if you think about it, you know, you can walk up a hill, you can walk down a hill, or you can walk on perfectly flat ground. Perfectly flat ground is zero slope. 
And we can check out over here how this makes sense with the formula. So if I do 3 minus 3 over top of 3 minus a negative 2, I end up getting a 0 over top of a 5. Now, 0 divided by anything is 0. That is a slope of 0. And that's what will happen anytime you have a horizontal line. Your y coordinates will be the same because you didn't go up or down, and it will turn into a slope of 0. Meanwhile, the other option is undefined. And I'm going to just pick us some points here. Undefined is where we go up and down, but we don't go anywhere left or right. So I'm going to call this 2 comma 3. And I'll call this one 2 comma negative 4. And if we go and use the formula on that and do negative 4 subtract 3 over top of 2 subtract 2, what we will get is a negative 7 divided by 0. And any time you try to use the slope formula on a vertical line, a line that runs up and down, you will get zero in the denominator, which gives us an answer of undefined. Because slopes can go uphill, they can go downhill, they can be flat, but they cannot be a cliff. A cliff is undefined in terms of its slope. And to conclude this video, let's just label here that these lines are vertical and these lines of slope zero are horizontal. And we'll continue more of our conversations about slope and rate of change together in class.